Hey everybody, good morning, or afternoon, whenever you watch this. Uh, it's Mr. Salmingo. Wish I was there with y'all today, but uh, in case you haven't heard, uh, the baby was born over Christmas vacation, and um, the baby's doing fine. We had a, uh, basically a week stay at the hospital, and um, as I told you, um, we had some challenges with him, but um, he's perfect and healthy, um, because they still want to do a lot of testing and a lot of those observations. Uh, I'm going to take these next two days to take care of all that stuff, and then I'll be back on Monday. So, um, sorry that I'm not going to be there. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, Mr. Banfield's a great substitute anyway. So, uh, thanks, Mr. Banfield. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two days to sort of review uh, integrals. Remember your final exams, we didn't go over integrals. Um, first of all, on your final exams, uh, for the most part, most of you did pretty well. Um, the scores are on power school. Uh, when I get back, I can show you your individual um, tests. Some of you may have panicked and freaked out, but for the most part, it wasn't meant to be a challenge, and uh, we'll talk about it when uh, when I get back. Um, if all goes well, I'll be back on Monday. So if you have, or if you can, if I want you to take out your notes, and um, maybe someone can pause this, maybe Mabel or Beatrice can pause this video so you guys can take out your notes, but I need to review you substitutions so you guys know it. Um, you substitutions are very critical skill that you need to know for the AP exam, and I don't think it's, okay, fine. You guys really think it's very difficult, but if we practice enough, I think you guys won't mind. And I know there's parts of it you guys understand anyway. So if you could pause or, or whatever, take out your notes and try to find the part that says U substitution. I don't remember which N this is, N something, and you can take it out real quick. So in U substitution, um, remember, it's like the chain rule for integration, okay? I think you guys are very good at finding what U is and what DU is. So here's an example of an integral that I cannot take by itself. Part of it because it's the square root. This one over here I can't take it says the 7x squared inside of parentheses. I just can't take the integral of, of a function that's inside a function. So what I did, if you remember, I did something called u and du. Okay. I made u whatever the inside function was. So in this case, the u is going to be 4x minus 9 because that is the function that's inside <coughs> the other function. Okay. Du is represented by the derivative of u. That's what du means. So the derivative of 4x minus 9, if you remember, and it's been a while, is 4 and dx. Okay. And I think you guys are very comfortable with this part, so I'm not going to spend so much time. But where you guys really get confused, or for the most part, where most of you get confused, is now what do I do from here? Okay. Remember, your goal is to try to get this whole problem and turn it into all u's, essentially. So do you see this 4x minus 9 right here? I could turn that, so I'm going to rewrite the problem. Because you said u equals 4x minus 9, I'm going to make that the square root of u. Make sense? So I already got rid of this x, so I got rid of that first part. Okay. But now I'm stuck with this dx. I need to get rid of this dx and make it in terms of u. Do you see on this problem I have du equals 4dx? So to replace this dx, I need to take this equation and get dx by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides, and I'll call this 1 fourth, because I'm dividing both sides by 4, du equals dx. So hopefully I'm not going too fast for you guys, but just know that I'm trying to substitute dx, so in this equation I need to get dx by itself. So now since dx equals 1 fourth du, I will place 1 fourth du where dx once was. And now I have something that I can actually integrate and, and not have a, a hard time because this one had a function inside a function. Again, it's been a while, but if you remember, the first step that I'm going to do is I have this number right here, 1 fourth, so I'll pull the 1 fourth out. And then the square root of u, again, it's been a long time, so if you remember, I can't take the integral of the square root, but I can change it into a form where I could take the integral. I'll name it u to the 1 half. And now this is something that I could take the integral of, okay? In case you forgot how to take the integral, we'll go over it again. You basically add 1 and divide by that number. And remember when you divide by a fraction, you're going to flip it. So in this case, if I add 1 to 1 half, it will become 3 halves. Okay? And if I divide by 3 halves, flipping it makes it 2 thirds. So, 
the 1 fourth still stays out here. And I'll make a bracket. So when I add 1 to 1 half, it becomes 3 over 2. And when I divide by 3 over 2, it becomes 2 thirds. U. And then when I add 1, this becomes 3 halves. So the antiderivative, or the integral, of u to the half is 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. Now all I have to do is multiply this out. This 1 fourth times 2 thirds, when I reduce, this becomes 1 and this becomes 2. So I'm going to get 1 sixth u to the 3 halves. And you just took the integral. But technically you're not done, and maybe you forgot why you're not done. It's because the problem was in x. My answer cannot be in u, so I need to put this back into x. So looking back at my little legend, u is 4x minus 9, so all I'm going to do is put 4x minus 9 back into that. And again, excuse my handwriting, I'm just using a mouse. So the antiderivative of the square root of 4x minus 9 is 1 sixth 4x minus 9 to the 3 halves. And if you really want to, which I'm pretty sure not very many of you will, I can take the derivative of this and I will get the square root of 4x minus 9. Pretty fascinating for me. All right, so let me delete this real quick. And let me show you example problem number two. In this problem, as I already mentioned, 7x squared is the, the inside function. So let me try to get rid of the 7x squared by calling u 7x squared. Now, I want du, and again, this, this is the part that most of you do not have problems with. du, if, if u is 7x squared, will be 14x dx. Now, here's where problem 1 is different than this problem. You'll notice that... I'm going to replace these 7x squares with u's. So secant u, tangent u. But I'm still left with two x's. I got this x right here and I got this dx right here. I need to get rid of that. I need to substitute it into u so I actually take the antiderivative. I can't have two different letters um, in the same problem. I need to just narrow it down and convert it to just one. Since I'm left with an x dx, in the second equation of my legend, I need to get x dx by itself so I can replace it. So in this equation, do you know how I can get x dx by itself? Yeah, I'm going to divide both sides by 14. So it's going to be 1 14th du equals x dx. So I know it's really messy. Over there. And some of you should have this on your notes anyway already. So when I replace this, I have secant u, tangent u, and I'm going to get 1 14th du. Okay, so far? Now, same, pro um, same steps as the previous problem. I have this 1 14th, I'm going to kick that out in front. And now I need to know what the antiderivative of secant tangent is, and I know some of you are going to need your guide or your paper, but again, you need to get used to not using it and try to remember what the derivatives of antiderivatives of trig functions are. But the antiderivative of secant tangent is secant. Okay, so I took the antiderivative. I'm done. The only problem is, is that I have a u. The problem didn't have a u. So I'm going to go back and go back to my legend and replace the u with 7x squared, and that's my answer. 1 14th secant of 7x squared. So hopefully you guys understand um, understand the substitution a little bit more. Uh, oh, sorry. One more example. It's up here at the top. It's a, it's a fraction. Okay. Some of you are wondering which is the inside function. I think some of you will know it. The inside function is going to be the one in the parentheses, x to the third minus 3x plus 1. We should make du, taking the, taking the derivative, would be 3x squared minus 3 dx. Now, when I put the u's into the problem, I think you'll understand that the bottom will be u to the 6th power. Because this part right here becomes this. So I get u to the 6th. But now I'm, stuck with, I'm still stuck with two x's. I have this x squared minus 1 dx. I need to get x squared minus 1 dx by itself. But noticing in our legend, do you see anything that says x squared minus 1? No. There's no x squared minus 1. How do I do this? Am I doing something wrong? Well, if you stare at it closely enough or long enough, 
This 3x squared minus 3, do you know how I can turn this into x squared minus 1? Yeah, I can factor out a 3. And do you see how it now becomes x squared minus 1? Yeah? And now in this problem, if I want to get x squared minus 1 dx by itself, so I can replace it, can you tell me what do I have to do to get x squared minus 1 by itself? Yeah, I'll divide both sides by 3. So it's going to be 1 third du equals x squared minus 1 dx. So now when I replace it, this whole thing right here just becomes 1 third du. So I'm going to leave this one right here. It's, there's, this disappears, so now it's just a 1. <clears throat> this thing just becomes 1 third du. Same exact steps. I'm going to factor out this 1 third. I cannot take the antiderivative of uh, 1 over u to the 6, but I can convert it into a form where I can. Do you know what I can turn this into? Yeah, u to the negative 6 du. Now it's something I can take the antiderivative. Remember, I add 1 and divide by it. <clears throat> so if I add 1, this becomes negative 5, and I'll divide by negative 5. So 1 over negative 5, u to the negative 5. Technically, I'm done, but I need to put the x's back into the problem. Um, so it's going to be multiplying this. This becomes 1 over negative 15. And then this inside part here will become um, x to the third minus 3x plus 1 to the negative fifth power. So hopefully this tutorial or refreshing your memory by use of this makes it a little bit easier. Um, for classwork today, what I'm going to have you do is I have a worksheet of, of these substitution practices that are just like these. I think the more practice you get, the more comfortable you'll feel. Um, you're not going to turn the worksheet today. I'm gonna uh, you're going to turn everything to Mr. Banfield tomorrow. Um, but today, I just want you to look at e substitution, practice for a little bit. I think it's uh, about 10 questions. And then uh, hold on to it. If you have any questions, um, you can email me or, or whatever. And uh, um, yeah, um, turn it in tomorrow. Uh, after class. So hope you have a good day and I'll see y'all on Monday or tomorrow in the video.